The city of Tampa has recently won the Super Bowl and back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. But tonight, the toughest strikers on the planet invade Tampa Bay with the goal of securing their legacy in the combat sports world. Live from the Florida State Fairgrounds in Tampa, the BKFC 19 free preliminary fights start right now. Hey, Fight Fans, I'm Ron Kruk. It is time to toe the line. Just over three years ago, the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship promotion staged the first officially sanctioned and commissioned Bare Knuckle event here in the U.S. since 1889. Since that historic night, the popularity of the sport and this promotion has blown up. A couple of reasons for that. The BKFC is signing some of the biggest stars to their roster, and they are producing stacked cards just like the one we have here in Tampa tonight. 14 fights coming your way, beginning with three free preliminary bouts on Fight TV, YouTube, Facebook, and the BKTV app. Tonight's pay-per-view includes the highly anticipated platform showdown Featuring TikTok, YouTube, hip hop stars battling it out in boxing exhibitions. TikTok friends turn foes meet when evil hero tangles with Dakota Olave. And hip hop superstar Blueface clashes with TikTok star Kane Trujillo. Then the ladies get the spotlight when Taylor Starling goes for another show stealing performance against Cassie Robb. And Britton Hart returns to clash with rival Jenny Savage. We have a heavyweight title eliminator fight in the co-main event when former heavyweight kingpin Arnold Adams knuckles up against undefeated Mick Terrell. And in the marquee fight of the night, two UFC veterans, Paige Van Zandt and Rachel Ostevich will toe the line in a rematch from 2019 when Van Zandt won via submission armbar. Ostevich looks to even the score here in Tampa tonight. To be a part of BKFC number 19, you've got to get the pay-per-view at Fight TV. Go to FITE.com or download the BKTV app. You can do that at BKFC.com. You will not want to miss this massive pay-per-view. We are ready to tow the line here in Tampa Bay. And the two men who are always ready to knuckle up are commentators, Sean Wheelock and former UFC fighter, Chris Lights Out Lytle. Gentlemen, take it away. Ron, thank you very much. First up, Chris, 165 pounders. Two intriguing stories. Both fighters very young. Now, this is the bare knuckle debut for both, but Jordan Nash has fought once pro bare knuckle. That in tow the line last October. Absolutely, and that can make a huge difference. I think we've seen from all the fights we've had so far, it takes people a few rounds to get the feel of it sometimes. It's different with no gloves on, so one guy's had it, one hasn't, so it's going to see how they can start and how they can figure this out before, you know, that, that tough punch comes. 14 fights headed your way, BKFC 19. The numbers now for our opening bout of the evening. They are presented by Fan Time. Brandon Allen versus Jordan Nash in the welterweight division. And as you can see here, Jordan Nash does have... Uh, a few inch height advantage, a few inch reach advantage. That's going to give him a little bit of advantage right now, but he has to know how to utilize it. He has to make sure every time Brandon Allen comes in, he's peppering with punches, keeping him at bay. So if Brandon Allen can get inside, he's going to have to land big punches and try and get that quick knockout. Jordan Nash at toe the line two last October recorded a second round TKO win versus Chris Levant. He's also had two pro MMA bouts. Nash said he discovered a toe the line last fall, Chris. Bare knuckle is really more about getting up than about getting knocked down. I found that to be a very interesting line. It's true, it is about getting up. It's about how you react once you get in there because you have a plan. You think you know what's going to happen, but once you get in there and get punched in the face, things change, and he's learned that now. Jordan Nash said of his opponent, Brandon Allen, for this bout, I'm not concerned with his power. My concern is getting cut. I have to be careful of those little flick punches. And that's pretty wise of him. He's already learned that that is a big concern with this. But I think he has to be careful because getting knocked out is a real concern too. 
You can't not worry about somebody's power in this just because it didn't happen last time. I know one thing he said he's want to focus on his head movement, which is a very good thing. He seems like he's learned a lot already in his short career. This is the Pro Combat Sports debut for Brandon Allen. He's had five amateur boxing matches and seven AMI MMA bouts. He said, I pride myself on being a very creative thinker in the midst of fights. Yeah, he said he's really good at analyzing in the fight. He's in there, he's figuring out things. That is the beauty of doing a lot of sparring, doing a lot of rounds. You get in there, it's all about figuring out how to hit and not get hit. It's like a chess match, and he feels like he's very good at that aspect of the game. Alan also told us in our fighter meeting, I think Jordan Nash is trying to be very physical. He's going to try to bully me. I have to counter that with fluid movement. He wants to show his, his flashy style, he thinks. He thinks being in there and, and dominating the entire fight is more important than getting a quick knockout. He wants to go out there and show that he is a better fighter. He said anybody can knock somebody out, but not everybody can dominate a fight for five rounds. So glad that you're with us for our worldwide preview, BKFC 19 prelims. In one hour from now, our main card begins on Bare Knuckle TV and on Fight. Prelim number one, we send it to the always outstanding Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the Florida State Fairgrounds here in beautiful Tampa, Florida. BKFC 19 begins with our free view portion of tonight's fights. And we kick it off with five two-minute rounds in the welterweight division presented to you by Fantime. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears black. He stands an even six feet tall. His official weight, 162.9 pounds. He holds an undefeated bare knuckle record at 1 0. Fighting out of Lake City, Florida. Here is Jordan Nash. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight he wears black. He stands five feet, nine inches tall. His official weight, 158.4 pounds. Tonight, he makes his bare knuckle debut. Fighting out of Tampa, Florida. Here is Brandon Superman Allen. And our referee in charge of the action, Chris Young. This and all bare knuckle bouts tonight are scheduled for five two minute rounds and are scored by three judges assigned by the Florida Athletic Commission on the 10 point must system. Okay, Jimmy, throw the line. Okay, listen up. Get back, get back. Christopher get Young get now telling both fighters to come up to scratch, toe the line, standing three That's feet apart in the center Jump of up. the BKFC ring. Round number one. Black and white trunks for Brandon Allen, black and gray trunks for Jordan Nash. For being Allen's first fight, he looks very comfortable out there. He looks very elusive right now. Just staying nice and calm. I like that. Good duck under. Slip from Brandon Allen. See the head movement? Working off of the jab is Allen. There's a good straight lead jab from Nash. One, two from Brandon Allen. Right hand, right back from Jordan Nash. Good left hook from Allen. Good left hand on the overhand left from Nash that landed. Now, Alan talked about being creative out there and being able to figure people out. That's going to take a few minutes. It's going to take a few rounds to actually get that good feel. So I wouldn't expect him to come out and jump out to a fast start. Knuckle up. If you're new to bare knuckle, you can punch in the clinch, but it has to be an active clinch. Once it goes inactive, you'll hear the referee call break, just as Christopher Young did in the last sequence. 60 seconds gone, round number one. Long jab from Brandon Allen. One, two from Allen. I feel like Nash has tasted something he doesn't like. I think he feels that Brandon Allen's punching a little harder and cleaner than he thought he would, and he's not liking coming forward as much as I thought. Looking right to the body, not there. Check left hook now from Jordan Nash. Right on the nose of Jordan Nash, slight bleeding out of both nostrils. Nash trying to be very patient, working the jab. Up in the jab right back is Brandon Allen. 
Only five seconds remaining round number one. You know, I I'm noticing that Nash seems like he's very deliberate with his punches. Good right left side. hand, and that rocks Jordan Nash. Another one. And to the clinch. You see how that's ruled by Christopher Young. Right back to his feet, and he's fine he's on. Ruled it was a big left hand. Lance from Brandon Allen. Final seconds, round number one. Nash did not go down. There is the bell. Great round, geez. Good finish, and look at that. Nash is peeling off the, wiping the blood off his face and licking it with his, wow. Savage right there, but you can really tell in that round, he was very deliberate with his punches. He wasn't throwing any kind of face everything. And here's gonna be a good look at that. Good left hand that rock him, comes back with some little flurry right there. And here's another good right hand that landed. Great round right there for Brandon Allen. That lead is almost what I call a Patterson hook for Floyd Patterson leaping in. And then there's another solid right hand. We talked about it earlier. And here's the end. Both guys landing good left hooks. Well, Nash landed in a right hand. But... Very entertaining round, Sean. Check us out. You'll see Lorenzo Hunt in the corner of Jordan Nash. And as Nash back, covered up, it was very Lorenzo Hunt like. <laughs> Protecting the head, moving backwards. Nash said Good Lorenzo point, Hunt has Good really point, changed Good my up. mindset on how to be a bare knuckle fighter. But that was a big round number one for Brandon Allen. To round number two, we go. Like I said, I, I like what Allen's throwing these feints. Nash needs to follow suit and do that a little bit. He's too deliberate with his punches. Allen can see him coming and he can counter him. Tentative on the left hand from Nash. Allen with the right hand. Allen, you see, he has the right hand loaded, left hand down. Look how he's just sitting there with his head moving. He's just waiting for his opponent to come with something. He's, he's dodging it. Bigger more confident swings, Chris, from Brandon Allen. That should get on the backward step. There's the jab. Nash bleeding out of both nostrils. He's also cut inside of his left brow. I said Nash is just 100 percent straight stop, stop, forward stop, stop, right stop, there. When he stop, comes, he's coming stop, hard. You can't hit the back of the head. You can't hit the back of the head, okay? Warning by okay, referee okay. Christopher Young okay. to Nash punches to the okay. back of the head. Nash's face is starting to turn into a mess over here. Got cuts in several spots. Now cut outside of his left brow as well. Oh. Almost got hammer fixed with the <laughs> lead left hand. And Brandon Allen's just leading, doing this lead right hand. It's very quick. Very good. You have to be pretty pretty quick when you throw that punch because usually you set up the two with a jab. He's not doing it. It's come with that straight lead right. If you don't see it, it works very effectively. I've seen Tim Elliott throw the standing hammer fist in MMA. That's the first one I've seen thrown in bare knuckle. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a different punch. 30 seconds remaining round number two. Slow forward pressure for Nash. Looking to explode into the pocket as Allen missed with the leaping left hand. Active clinch, we fight on. You saw the wrist control on the inside from Nash. Now, 15 seconds remaining in the second round. And, and, and Nash just keep popping, popping forward right now, but he needs to throw some things. He needs to set up some punches right there. He just, I'm gonna hit you really, really hard, and you better land it, because other, otherwise you're gonna get countered. That is the end of round two. At least three cuts on the face of Jordan Nash. And I feel like, Right now, Allen is fighting when he wants to fight. He's being elusive out there. He's using some good head movement. And when he decides he wants to punch, he's throwing punches out there. Uh, Jordan Nash is coming forward with some hard jabs and some hard right hands, but he, they're, they're pretty linear, and they're kind of easy to, uh, to see what's coming. Top of the hour, our main card begins. It's BKFC 19, live from Tampa, Florida. In our main event, Paige Van Zandt versus Rachel Ostrovich. And here's that hammer fish you talked about, Sean. You see the look on Brandon Allen's face. He's like, what, what the heck was that? What are you doing? Last month, Bruce Luch Media all threw what we coined the sky hook, and there was the hammer fish. <laughs> hey, start painting. A lot of faith. It's a new sport. You can be creative. You can do your own thing, it looks like. Which one are you ready? Both fighters up to scratch. Look, look. The start of round number three. And there's a feint right there that Allen's throwing. Just little things like that to see how his opponent's going to react. Pivot off the line. Back to the center of the ring goes Jordan Nash. Forward pressure now from Brandon Allen. 
You know, I'd like to see him faint that jab and come back with the left hook afterwards. That Patterson hook he did works beautifully. Good sequence on the inside from Nash, finished with the right hand. Yeah, Nash looks like he has a more of a sense of urgency right now. I think he feels like he lost the first two rounds. You can see definitely shades of Lorenzo Hunt's style in Jordan Nash. Yeah, well, he's been working with them for a while, and it just takes a little bit of time to get that style down pat. So much of Lorenzo Hunt's fighting and training is catching, moving, parrying, not standing and trading. Well, muted round three now for Brown and Allen than we saw in rounds one and two, but as I say that, a one-two. And I feel like from watching Jordan Nash right there, he's, he's putting a little bit too much weight on his, his lead leg. It seems like his, all his weight is on his left foot. It makes it harder to throw that big right. Jab from Nash. Can't move as well either. And Allen continuing to load up the right hand as his left hand extremely low. And I think that's by design, Chris. I think he's trying to bait in Jordan Nash by keeping his left low. Oh, 100%. Oh. Overhand right misses from Allen. He's doing that because he feels like he's a quicker fighter. He feels like if he can get his opponent to commit, he can counter him. Good Just like left he did hand. with the left hand right there. Allen landed that. Jab right back from Jordan Nash. 15 seconds remaining round number three. Ten seconds, Jimmy, ten seconds. Nash was definitely hurt in round number one, but he did not go down. This seems to be more of a Jordan Nash round. Next stop, round number four. Definitely a closer round. I think Jordan Nash has made some adjustments right there. He's fighting with a, a bigger sense of urgency right now, you can tell. Stay your energy. Nah, you gotta fight. What the fuck is that standing there? I want you to beat him up. He's too big. He's too big for him. He's scared of you now. Whenever you get close, you throw. You throw. When you get close, you throw. When he not close, what'd you say? The third round. That was the third round. Am I winning? You're fucking winning, bro. But now I want you to keep busy. Even when he's not in striking range, keep moving your hands, keep moving your feet. Don't wait Lynn's for him. Lynn's on the dive for his shit Listen, fly loose. Listen, let me see. Let me see him come after you. He's not coming after you. Every time that so he's fucking take a pick, he's going for him. Stop standing in front of him. Stop standing in front of him. Stop standing in front of him. You standing in front of him, man. Stop standing in front of him. That's nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. You got this. Wait. 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 Don't get that money. Some very interesting advice right there from uh, from Hunt. He's telling he's telling Jordan Ash he's winning the fight, which is pretty questionable to me. I think he might be down two to one, but I would agree with you. Allen absolutely won round number one, and I think he ran one round number two. But I did like the advice. He said, "Don't stand straight in front of him." He doesn't like your power, and yeah, that's true. He doesn't. 15 seconds gone. Round number four. Then Allen. Very fluid in his movement. Left hand low, pumping the jab, loading up the right hand. Nash open chested coming forward, trying to cut off the ring. Is that check left hook from Nash? Nash really starting to find his range right now. He's starting to land a little bit better shots. Not taking so many himself. Good step in jab from Nash. And that bothered Nash. Look at his face. Look at his eye. He's, he's wincing right now. You get one little punch in the eye, that really changes things here. See the blood all over the face of Jordan Nash as he pushes forward. 65 seconds remaining round number four. A lot of backward steps here in the fourth round from Brandon Allen. I mean, Brandon Allen, he's doing a decent job of avoiding punches, but he's not landing anything on the way out. He's dodging. You don't get points for dodging. You get points for landing punches. Lockdown pressure continually from Jordan Nash. Yeah, and in these close rounds like this, it's usually the guy who's pushing forward that's getting a nod. Not always. We saw that last time. It wasn't quite the case, but most of the time it is. You see the swelling just outside of the right eye on the face of Brandon Allen. Big right hand on the step in from Allen. See that naked. Good for the jab. Just loaded the right and threw it. 25 seconds to go in the fourth round. That's a puncher where I, I talked about a minute where it requires a lot of speed. I know Muhammad Ali did it a lot in the first time when he fought. I guess the only time he fought George Foreman. Tried to slot the first round and it worked, but then he didn't do it too much after that. Long jab, nothing there from Nash. Step in overhand left from Nash. Nash looking for one more significant punch, cutting off the ring. 
That is the end of round four to the fifth and final round we go. And words between the fighters. That was a very close round right there. Yeah, I'm not sure from a judging standpoint, you know, I'm not sure who's winning this fight. So if I'm in the corner, I'm telling both guys, you have to win this round. In order to be a star, you gotta take a chance. Well, fucking coach left me, I ain't got a gym. I'm your coach, I know. <laughs> and as you can see, I talked about the distance and the range. Nash starting to figure it out a little bit better right there. And there's that nice jab he's landed. Landed it several times. You can tell by Brendan Allen's face. And it knocks him back, just keeping the right range. It's very important right there. He's doing that. Chris, I know you're a huge advocate of open scoring, which is used by the Kansas no Athletic Commission. If there were open scoring and this were 2-2, how much would that be changing and impacting this round five? I mean, it would change that's everything. That's everything. That's you know exactly what you have to do. Or if you're down three to one, you know exactly what you have to do. It would be so much better. I mean, I really enjoy when we go to Kansas State do that. I think all states should think about adopting that. Chris and I cannot see the scores. Quite possible, though, you're looking at two rounds apiece. Fifth and final round, Brandon Allen versus Jordan Nash. Yeah, like I said, if I'm in Jordan, if I'm in Jordan Nash's corner, I'm telling you, you have to win this round. Same thing for Brandon Allen. Get after him right now. More urgency from Brandon Allen as he starts round number five. The most we've seen from him since the second round. There's urgency as well from Nash, but he eats the left hand. Yeah. The fighters throwing in and out of the clinch. Good bit of refereeing by Christopher Young letting this fight flow. 30 seconds gone in the fifth round. I feel like Brandon Allen's doing a, himself a disservice by putting his back against the ropes all the time. He needs to be more in the middle. And so often in close rounds, judges, and this is across not just bare knuckle, but all combat sports, will reward the forward pressure fighter. So weird, you never know exactly what the judges are looking for. Are they looking for power shots? Are they looking for volume? Are they looking for pressure? That's why open scoring makes so much sense. The cuts on the face of Nash open in rounds one and two. Yeah, good cut work though. They've really had played that big of a factor in the fight. The fighters right back into the center circle. 40 seconds remaining in this 165 pound fight. Very even between Allen and Nash. Left hand from Jordan Nash. You got to like this. Whoever lands a big flurry in the last 30 seconds could very well win this fight. And you see the forward step from Nash. Cutting off the ring. Off of the one. Off of the jab. Right to the body. Got a right hand. Misses from Allen. Now stepping out of range. Good jab from Brandon Allen. Got this off the mark to answer from Nash. Right hand from Allen. 10 seconds, you gotta let it all go out right now. Nash very subtly waved Allen forward, then stepped into the pocket. Good separation from Christopher Young, the bell, the end of a very competitive fight. Yeah, I don't like that. A little bit of sportsmanship at the end. He looked like they had some bad blood throughout the fight, but it's all over now. Tough, tough fight to call, Sean. I would not want to be a judge in this one. Just over 30 minutes, our main card begins. Top of the hour, it's BKFC 19. Main event it by Paige Van Zandt versus Rachel Ostovich. The way to watch it is on Bare Knuckle TV and on Fight. You're with us worldwide for our free view, our live and free prelims, BKFC 19. Get three judges scoring on the 10-point must system assigned by the Florida Athletic Commission. There's that severe swelling that started to present itself in round number three. Started on the outside and then moved to the underneath of the right eye on the face of Brandon Allen. Count the cuts on the face of Jordan Nash. Five plus bleeding out of both nostrils. <laughs> You know, I really enjoyed that fight. That was a good way to start the night. Two fighters sensing the moment and both trying to seize the moment. And BKFC debut for both. Both acquitting themselves very well. Look on the face of Brandon Allen.
Here is Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, after completing the scheduled five rounds, here are the score totals from our judges at ringside. All three judges scored the fight 48-47 in favor of your winner by unanimous decision, Jordan Nash! Wow, good recovery right there for Jordan Nash. I feel like he lost the first two rounds, came back and won the last three. Great job, he's moved to 2-0, and he's really starting to understand this sport of Bandai Club fighting. Chris, I think our speculation was correct. I believe it was two rounds apiece going into that fifth and final round. Great start from Brandon Allen. Nearly dropped Nash in round number one, and then Nash taking control in round number three, all the way to the win. Victorious by way of unanimous decision in his bare knuckle fighting championship debut, Jordan Nash defeats Brandon Allen. Welcome to the world of bare knuckle TV. Watch every live bare knuckle fighting championship pay per view event for only $3.99 per month. Enjoy our all new library of content, including unlimited access to the full archive of BKFC pay per views, behind the scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. You can access it anywhere you want, anytime you want, instantly on most screen devices. It's available right now on the Bare Knuckle TV app. Over 1,000 hours of on-demand content, uncut and uncensored. All here, anytime you want, anywhere you want, for only $3.99 a month. Subscribe now exclusively at bktvapp.com. Heavyweights for you now and two big, powerful heavyweights. Chris Jensen versus Kyle McElroy. Our tale of the tape is presented by Tiger Life Energy, the cleaner energy drink. And as you can see here, it's kind of a little strange. Chris Jensen is the one inch smaller fighter, but he has a three and a half inch reach advantage. I think the reach advantage is way more important than the height. Can allow you to keep out, keep the distance, and every time your opponent has to come in, you can pepper them and hit them, making them pay to come in. So that's the main difference I see from the tail of the tape. The moment is here for 37-year-old Kyle McElroy. This is his pro combat sports debut. He was selected from the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship Open Tryouts in Texas this past May. Drove there from his home in Albuquerque, New Mexico, chasing a dream. And he is seizing this opportunity to the fullest. McElroy said, I feel that I'm fast and elusive for a heavyweight. I want to enjoy myself, I want to have fun, I want to absolutely live in this moment. And that's huge, you know, like you said, this guy wasn't, you know, a professional fighter. He comes to a tryout in Texas, drives a long way, gets there, and, and look where he's at right now. This is a dream of his, and you got to like the fact that you can do that. You can come to an open tryout, and next thing you know, you're on TV and you're being watched by millions of people. McElroy who is six foot three and weighed 242.0 pounds for this fight, said, not only will I throw one Superman punch, I'm going to throw a lot of Superman punches. I check <laughs> to make sure they're legal, and of course they are in bare knuckle. Well, he wants to throw jabs, he wants to throw lead uppercut Superman. He wants to use all these awkward punches to set up his power shots. Something, a new technique, I think maybe he's trained it, maybe he's practiced it, but he's ready to practice it. And the real deal right here on in the squared circle. Can't wait to see it. What we do here is go back, back, back. This is the third bout in bare knuckle for Chris Jensen and his second in BKFC. He's also had four pro MMA fights. Jensen told us, Chris, in our fighter meeting, he has trained harder for this bout than in any as a pro or amateur in his combat sports career. Well, that, that's really big. He's learned right now. He has himself on the biggest platform there is in bare knuckle. He wants to capture this opportunity. He has to train harder than he ever has. He said that's what he did. He said he wants to establish a jab. He said one thing he wants to do here is mentally break his opponent. 
Jensen also told us, I think McElroy, because this is his combat sports debut, he knows the moment is at hand. He's going to explode off of the scratch line, swing big for the knockout. If I can get past the first 60 seconds, I believe I can take control of this fight. Well, and he also believes that his opponent, he doesn't really respect his opponent's punching power. So, you know, I, I don't think he's as worried about the first you know, minute, three seconds. He feels like he has the advantage when it comes to punching power, and his opponent doesn't. Jensen said, I'm gonna step inside of his power shots, land to the body. I th Back we go to Jeff Houston. Fight fans of Tampa, we are set for the next five of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the heavyweight division. Presented to you by Tiger Life Energy, the cleaner energy drink. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears orange, white, and green. He stands six feet, three inches tall. His official weight, an even 242 pounds. Tonight, he makes his bare knuckle debut. Fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Here is Kyle, the Irishman, Marco. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black. He stands six feet, two inches tall. His official weight, 262 and one half pounds. His bare knuckle record stands at one victory opposite a single defeat. Fighting out of Tampa, Florida. Here is Chris Big Boy Jensen. And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Merkliana. Both fighters up to scratch. Up. Round number one, and there's the Superman punch off the scratch line from Kyle McElroy. McElroy takes a couple hard shots right away. Jensen in the black trunks, green and orange for McElroy. Jensen throwing big, landing big. McElroy walking with his hands down. He's got to be very careful doing that. Jensen to the inside. There's the exit from McElroy. Jess eludes the hook to the body. And you can tell Jensen does not have any respect for McElroy's power right now by the way he's fighting. To the clinch, half tie plum. Uppercut chest miss from Jensen. There's the good left hand, and that lands. That backs off McElroy. Man, but I, he might not respect his power, but he better respect his chin because he's taking some hard shots and he's not going down yet. To the inside, counter right hand off of the ropes from McElroy. And Jensen's like, he got to get his legs underneath him. He's getting far too outstretched with these punches. He's wild right now. McElroy, you see, cutting his forehead, takes that left hand, and down he goes in round number one. There's the count from Dan Mergliotta. His legs are very wobbly right now. I don't know if we're going to let this go. We might be done, and we are. That is it. The win for Chris Jensen, round number one. He still doesn't really know exactly what's happened. That was a good stoppage by Dan Margliata. I mean, Jensen did a good job of taking advantage. He needed to get his legs underneath him a little bit more, but he didn't have to because he landed the punch quick enough. And the fight would have kept going. It might have been dangerous for him, but McElroy was just keeping his hands down and putting himself in a bad position the entire fight. You know, this is a, a situation, I think, where it looked a little bit different when he watched it on TV. Like, I can do this. I can do it. I can put my hands out. I'm fast. I'm elusive. But a little bit different when, when Chris Dent is coming at you 100 miles an hour just putting all his weight, all his power behind these big looping punches and hooks. Well done from Chris Jensen. McElroy was throwing big, started fast. Jensen, as he said he would do, stay calm and then immediately seized control. Well, I mean, you know, like I said, I felt like he should have tried to get his legs underneath him a little bit more, but didn't really have to at that point because I think he felt like as soon as he tagged his opponent once with a good shot, he was going to hurt him, and he was right. You know, I mean, McElroy did a pretty good job, actually, of avoiding a lot of big punches, but he couldn't avoid them all. And when he did, got hit one time, he cut him open, he was hurt. And when he hit the ground, he got up, and he was clearly didn't know exactly where he was at.
Watch the Superman punch from Kyle McElroy off the scratch line. Right from the beginning. But look, his hands are down. He takes two punches right away. This isn't the sport for that. You want to try keeping your hands down, you might be able to do it in some other place. But look at that. He looks like he got hit with an axe. Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Big Dan Mergliana, steps in and calls a stop to the fight at 1 minute 17 seconds into round number one. For your winner, by TKO, Chris Big Boy Jensen. Great win right there for Chris Jensen. Gets him the 2 and one Did exactly what he needed to do. He smelled blood and he went right after it. He had an opponent who was dropping his hands. He took advantage of it exactly like he should have. Chris Jensen, very emotional in our fighter meeting. Again, he talked about how hard he trained for this fight, how much a win would mean to him, and you see it on his face in victory. Well, like you said, he really wanted to get the victory in his hometown. And right here, land some good punches. Got it. Heavy, powerful shots on the inside for Chris Jensen, dropping Kyle McElroy and getting the win. Victorious by way of first round TKO, Chris Jensen defeats Kyle McElroy. Welcome to the world of Bare Knuckle TV. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $3.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including unlimited access to the full archive of BKFC pay-per-views, behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. You can access it anywhere you want, anytime you want, instantly on most streaming devices. It's available right now on the Bare Knuckle TV app. Over 1,000 hours of on-demand content, uncut and uncensored. All here, anytime you want, anywhere you want, for only $3.99 a month. Subscribe now exclusively at BKTVapp.com. Be magical. Kids believe in magic. Whether they're driving race cars, building robots, or taking a spaceship to the moon, the possibilities were limitless. As adults' life is more minivans than race cars, more emails than robots, what if magic was real? What if magic was more than your uncle's corny birthday party tricks? Real magic is empowering a veteran to get their life back. Real magic is helping a kid realize their dreams. Karma Coin is about helping real people and rallying around real causes. Oh, and we give away real supercars. The magic is back. Let's go to the moon. We've got a great card here tonight at BKFC 19, headlined by the return of Paige Van Zandt. But there's two fights I really like. On the undercard, you've got Abdiel Velasquez taking on Guillen Herrera. Velasquez is a BKFC veteran. He's fought six times in the promotions. And although he has three losses, they were against very good opponents. I really like his odds tonight at plus 110. Another one of the fights, my absolute favorite fight, Taylor Starling against Cassie Robb. Taylor Starling in her last fight put on one of the best fights in BKFC history. She's going to come for war. She's going to come to brawl. And I know these two ladies are going to put on a great performance. Back to you, Sean. BKFC 19 live tonight from Tampa, Florida is presented by Fan Time. Tiger Life, the cleaner energy drink. Fusion CBD sports water. BetOnline.pg and buy Yummy Crypto. Our prelims roll on, our final prelim before our main card begins. Top of the hour on Bare Knuckle TV and on fight from the heavies to the light heavies. The numbers presented by Fusion CBD Sports Water, Jay Jackson versus David Bell. Now, now, Sean, a lot of time when we're looking at the tail of the tape, there's not a big difference in any area. This is not one of those cases right there. You have a few inch reach advantage, or height advantage, I should say, for Jay Jackson. But look at that. He's got a 
huge reach advantage right now. That should pay dividends for him if he can make Damon Bell pay every time he steps forward, every time he tries to close that gap. He's got to hit him with a clean one-two, come back with a little hook, keep his opponent at bay, and that makes him come forward every time and take shots. This is the BKFC debut for Damon Bell. He's had one pro kickboxing bout, 11 amateur MMA fights. Prides himself on a very clean and technical Dutch Muay Thai style base. Absolutely. He's been focused on a lot of things for this fight. He's exiting the clinch. He wants to throw punches, making sure he exits properly. When somebody's throwing him, he wants to learn to block with his elbows. I think doing that, maybe trying to hurt the other person's hands, I think just some very unique stuff. I'm not sure exactly if he's came up with them himself or he's read about this, but he's wanting to hurt his opponent's hands by blocking with his elbows. Bell said I've been working on transitions into and out of the clinch, something that he said comes very natural from his Muay Thai training. Which makes a lot of sense. You know, he looked at his opponent, he says he feels like his opponent is very durable. His opponent will come straight forward. Um, he wants to stay in the mid-range and work on utilizing his head movement. for a building with no signals. And like his opponent, Damon Bell, this is the BKFC debut for Jay Jackson. Jackson has had 17 pro MMA fights. Told us he prides himself on being a very athletic fighter. He said, I use forward movement. I like to throw left hooks and right hands and I utilize excellent head movement. You know, I've seen Jay Jackson at a couple of our fights, and this is something he really wants to do. I really like the fact that he's always been here and he's been trying to get on the card and found his opportunity. Another thing I like about him is he said he's really looking to throw left hooks and overhand right. Man, after round hard, I'm more of a power puncher, not a jabber. Jackson said, Damon Bell is heavy-handed, but he's flat-footed. I'm not going to stand and trade in the pocket with him. I'm going to move and hit him apart. Here is Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the light heavyweight division. Presented to you by Fusion CBD Sports Water. All the benefits you need for fast muscle recovery. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears gray and black. He stands five feet nine inches tall. His official weight, 184.1 pounds. He makes his bare knuckle debut tonight. Fighting out of Louisville, Kentucky. Here is Damon Bell. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black and white. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall. His official weight, 184.6 pounds. He also makes his bare knuckle debut tonight. Fighting out of Saginaw, Michigan, here is Jay Action Jackson. And our referee in charge of the action, Chris Young. See the intense look on the face of Damon Bell. I noticed Leonard, Leonard Garcia's in his corner. I wonder what that connection is. They met at tryouts. They developed Here's a friendship. And line. Garcia said, I will come and corner you for your Listen BKFC up. debut. That is huge for Damon line. Bell. Blue corner, you ready? Red corner, fighters you ready? up to scratch. Up. Round number one. Black and white trunks for Jay Jackson. Gray and black trunks for Damon Bell. Step in with the left hook goes Jay Jackson. Jackson throwing big early into the pocket. Counter rear right hand, uppercut from Bell. Bell's trying to utilize that clinch right now. He sees his opponent's bigger than him. He wants to keep it on the inside. Stop, 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 stop. Pressure and activity in the finish, clinch. Okay. Quick separation from referee Christopher Young. Right back to it. Step in with the jab. Big swings from both men in and out of the pocket. Again, Jackson said, I'm not going to stand, plan, and trade. I'm going to be fluid and move. In and out, side to side. 
Still trying to walk forward. Doubling up on the jab, there's the right. Off of the 1-1-2. One, 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 10 remaining round number one. Back to the flick center of the ring. Stop, 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 Jay Jackson, stop, 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 stop. Uh, he's being correct with what he said he's going to do. He's not really throwing jabs. He's throwing a lot of right hands, left hooks. He's throwing a lot of different punches out there, but not a lot of jabs. Patience from both men. Naked right hands doesn't get through from Jackson. Good one, too. That was a hook to the body that landed from Jackson. That was more of a big left hand, right hand. Jackson now in all sorts of trouble. Nearly went down. And that is ruled a knockdown, and correctly so from referee Christopher Young. It was the corner cushion that supported Jackson from falling. Excellent referee. Taking the mandatory aid is Jay Jackson. We'll see how hard Damon Bell now goes for the finish. And that would jump all over him right now. He's got his opponent hurt. Doing the opposite is Damon Bell. Damon Bell's very, very cautious right now. You got a hurt opponent. You, you got to smell blood and come after him right now. But don't be stupid and just jump in there. You got to come on the jab. Right like hand. Exploding back in. But a lot of time between that knockdown and the first punch then thrown by Bell. Three. Jackson will make it to round number two. Top of the hour, our main card begins. You can see it on Bare Knuckle TV and on fight. Main event is, of course, by Paige Van Zandt versus Rachel Ostovich. BKFC 19, live coming to you worldwide from Tampa, Florida. That was a very good round. I thought it was very even until that one punch. I thought Jay Jackson did a lot of good things right there. He just got caught with a good punch. And that punch, it cut his eye. You can see right there over his right brow. Right here, I think, is going to be the punch. Hit him with a few punches right there. It looked like he was a little wobbly. I'm a little surprised Damon Bell didn't try to jump on him right afterwards. When he has this guy hurt, he needs to try to finish him right there. There is no standing eight count in the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship rule set. There's, of course, the mandatory eight count when you're not down. You take the eight. Christopher Young ruled that Jay Jackson would have gone down if otherwise supported by the corner cushion and the ropes. That's why he ruled the knockdown. Get the mat up, get the mat up. So one would presume 10-8 across the board for Damon Bell, round number and one. Yeah. Line. And like you're saying, you're not saying that... Look when you're ready. Look when you're ready. Look it up. What you're saying is he would have gotten knocked down if the ropes weren't there. Absolutely. Agent calm start. It's the Commentate World Lightweight Championship. You saw the little faint block with the rear right hand from Bell. I saw that all the time in Myanmar. Absolutely. Good right hand from Jackson. And Jackson being true to himself once again, one of those power punches the entire time. He wasn't kidding when he talked about his Dutch influence Muay Thai style. Shades of that Thai influence more than the Dutch at times with the blocks. Stop. To the clinch goes Jay Jackson. Very clean, very clean. Kind of surprised he broke him right there. They were both landing some punches from the clinch. Well cut bridge of his nose. Bigger punches now. There's the right uppercut from Jackson. Back into the clinch. Forward pressure from Bell moving Jackson's back against the ring ropes. Break clean, gentlemen. Young breaks. Look up. Step in right hand. We'll give that rule to slip and it is. Bell took himself off balance with the right hand. Didn't get his legs underneath him, he's just throwing wild punches right there. Left hand, Jackson trying to find his way back into this fight after being dropped in round number one. Although technically he wasn't dropped, but ruled the knockdown just the same. Stop punching, stop punching, stop punching. Watch the back of the head, Tim, okay? Buckle look. Warning five from referee Christopher Young to Damon Bell, punches to the back of Jackson's head. 30 seconds remaining round two. Good stiff jab from Jay Jackson. Like jab step away that time from Jackson. I mean, you can see the pace is slowing right now. Jay Jackson's punches are a little bit slower right now because he's throwing nothing but nothing but fastballs. Like he's throwing down. all power punches. Ahead, the uppercut, short right hand, good short left hand from Jackson in the clinch. Ten seconds, Jim. Ten seconds. Clinch is where Bell and Chris felt that he would go. Oh. The Jackson's yeah. out. Oh. Oh. Now knocks down Damon Bell. Final seconds Ooh. of round two. Ooh. A good little left uppercut, I think, that landed in there. He cannot be saved by Six. the Bell in any round. Seven. The mandatory eight will continue. Ready to go. This fight will continue to round number three. And there's the 10-8 right back for Jay Jackson. I mean, you gotta love that. One guy gets knocked down in the first, the next guy gets knocked down in the second. What can the third round bring? I mean, you just have no idea who's gonna win. 
Who's going to win this third round? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a game of you know, momentum right now, and obviously Jay Jackson has all the momentum on his side right now. And here it is. Comes in with that left uppercut, it looked like right there. It's a left hook kind of. Right as I was about to say, Jay Jackson keeps throwing. Oh, that was the uppercut that hurt him right there. Later, uppercut, it took a couple seconds before he finally fell from it. Looked like an awkward fall on his leg, too. I, I didn't I think his leg got caught up underneath it. Chris, I think we're looking at the very rare 18 18 going into <laughs> round three. You don't hear that too much. I don't know if I've ever heard of it. Don't chase it. Don't chase it. Cut him off. Now, left hook's coming. Both guys are cut. Both guys are bleeding. Both guys have been dropped. We've only been two rounds. Again, top of the hour. Our main card begins. If you haven't ordered, you still have plenty of time. Bare Knuckle Take TV it and fight. Take it They're not able to Take get that nose and stop bleeding. That could cause some breathing problems. You may see Damon Bell breathing out of his mouth. Total line. Total line. Look for you ready. Look for you Except ready. for round number three. Another fighter coming forward off the scratch line. Now there's a good stiff jab from Jackson to start round three. Lead left hook. Left hook again from Jackson. Jackson now to the body. Clinch, the overhook held by Damon Bell. Separation from Christopher Young. Left hand lands from Damon Bell. That backs off Jay Jackson. Damon Bell's not getting his legs underneath him. He's just rushing forward with these punches, and his legs are still far behind him. His head's getting too far over his feet. Hard to generate the right power doing that, and you're open for huge counter punches. And into the clinch goes Damon Bell. Smear of blood on his face. He cut inside of his left brow. Jackson loading up the right hand. Eats that right hand from Bell. Steps off. Both fighters back to the center of the ring. Leaping left hook. Right hook to the body. Left hook to the body from Jackson. A bit of creativity. Yeah, I like the body work being displayed right now. Jackson's been pretty good about throwing a lot of hard punches to the body. A huge hematoma and not on the forehead of Bell. So pulling that right hand back. Pulling that right hand back. Short right hand. Jeff Bell dipping his head into the pocket. Way to work out of there. Oh, right hand right back from Damon Bell. Back and forth we go. 25 seconds remaining round number three. You see the circle out now from Jackson. Big exhale from Bell. <laughs> it may not sound like a long time. Oh! oh. We've talked about it before, Sean. I absolutely love it when you see a guy get knocked down, get up on the canvas, and come back to finish this guy. That's a beautiful thing about this sport. It happens more often than you think. It speaks to heart. It speaks to character as well as talent. Absolutely. And you can tell, like I said earlier, we've had Jay Jackson here at several events. This guy's been here for a while. He's wanted this so bad. He finally had an opportunity. He gets dropped in the first round. What happens? He comes back and knocks the, his opponent down in the second and knocks him out in the third. You just saw the appreciation from BKFC fighter Brandon Lambert. And here's in just a big right hand right down the pipe. Stepped into it. The fifth hit in flesh. When you hear that sound, you know the fight's probably over. Disappointment for Damon Bell. Had a big round number one in which he recorded the knockdown as Jackson was hung up against the ropes. But ruled by Christopher Young that he would have fallen otherwise and ruled correctly. Jackson, though, coming back. Dropping Bell in round number two and then finishing him in round number three. Hey, blue corner. Blue corner. Come on, buddy. Good job, Sam. Good job. Here's Jeff Houston. Uh, ladies.
ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Chris Young, reaches the count of 10 at 1 minute 58 seconds into round number three for your winner by KO J Action Jackson. Very happy for Jay Jackson. He showed a lot of heart. We've talked about that, getting up off the canvas to get the victory. He looked fantastic out there, and he's super happy. Been working very hard for this. Celebrating with Lorenzo Hunt. And that is an emotional win for Jay Jackson and now a nice moment between these two fighters. Damon Bell gave a really good account of himself. And again, Jackson not only showing his skill set, showing his character, coming from behind to record that knockout win. Both fighters giving and receiving. Bell thought he would get the finish in round number one. Jackson then, turning this fight in round number two, getting the knockdown and finishing Bell with a knockout in the third round. Victorious by way of third round KO, Jay Jackson defeats David Bell. It's the Bare Knuckle TV app, just $3.99 a month. You can watch our original content, including all Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship events, plus other combat sports events coming to you worldwide. You can download it now, bktvapp.com, just $3.99 per month, Bare Knuckle TV.